1993, Susan Sontag asked Annie to join her in Sarajevo to photograph the ongoing destruction in a splintering former Yugoslavia. Sarajevo had at this point already been under attack for over a year, the people trying to go about their daily lives, not knowing if a sniper would cut their time short. In her book At Work, Annie describes being driven through the western edge of Sarajevo when a mortar came down in front of their car, ripping through the back of a teenage boy on a bicycle. They tried to rush him to the hospital, but he died on the way. The realities of war and the randomness of the destruction leveled Leibovitz and put her work into perspective. Because I remember I had to go from, from being in Sarajevo to right back to doing, you know, Barbara Streisand and stuff like that. And suddenly, Barbara Streisand didn't seem so, so relevant. What side Barbara Streisand needed to be photographed from didn't seem, um, you know, important. Although her time in Bosnia shifted her own worldview, Leibovitz had to wrestle with the concept of celebrity upon her return. Her own celebrity status brought attention to her work in Sarajevo, to eyes more focused on the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Annie's photographs of the famous in turn made her famous, and in the United States there are few things more valuable. Almost every celebrated figure of our times knows an unassuming young woman with a camera named Annie Leibovitz. From the Stones to the Trumps, photographer Annie Leibovitz has captured everyone who's anyone. I think that it's a society that's totally lost its bearings in terms of what its values are, and so it's putting all its value into uh, celebrity. There's such a, a lack of, 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 of spiritual self-confidence, perhaps, that uh, the achievers seem to have uh, to be the kind of the, 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 the sort of the holy, the holy cows that people worship. You're always in a confrontational situation with publicists in regard to stars. The great thing about Annie is that Annie is her own person. And if I can get Annie accepted by the star's agent, then I know I'm going to get a great shot because Annie won't put up with any nonsense. Her interest is in getting a memorable shot, and it isn't necessarily the shot that the star would pick. Hey, Chris, Chris, stand there. Stand there. Let's go right there. Are you the biggest photographer in the world? Is there like rankings? <laughs> Vanity Fair magazine, under the editorial eye of Tina Brown, loved to push the envelope, often to the chagrin of her advertisers, like with the story of comedian Roseanne Barr. Unlike the sterile, meticulous images of celebrities that their publicists and the readers expected, the photos with Roseanne and her new boyfriend Tom Arnold were wild, messy, and dangerous. Annie found herself at the center of another controversy when she photographed Queen Elizabeth II in 2007. And the BBC has had to apologise to the Queen for wrongly implying that she stormed out of a royal photo shoot. It's also apologised to the photographer Annie Leibovitz. A trailer released for a BBC documentary series on the Queen appeared to show her walking out of the photo shoot after a disagreement with the photographer. Well, the story's been repeated in most newspapers this morning, but this lunchtime the BBC has had to admit that it wasn't really what happened and that the actual sequence of events was misrepresented. The Queen hadn't walked out at all. This morning's headlines and news bulletins were full of it. The Queen, it was said, had stormed out of a photo shoot the day the Queen snapped. How did they know? Well, this image is from a new trail for a BBC documentary that was shown yesterday to journalists. In it, they had seen her posing for the photographer Annie Leibovitz and being asked to remove her tiara. Could we try it without the crown? Just, it will look better, less dressy, because the garter robe is so extraordinary. Less dressy? What do you think this is? What I mean is... It was then followed by shots of her appearing to walk out, sounding decidedly unhappy. Well, it appears the editing misrepresented what really happened. She hadn't stormed out. And today, the BBC apologised. You know, the, the, the truth is, I mean, I, I'm so used to people, you know, not liking to have having their picture taken. They, I, I think it's a very difficult, you know, it, it can be a very difficult process for some people. It's, it's very uh, psychological. And, you know, I mean, it's... I don't want to exactly equate it to like going to the dentist, but you know it, it can be a, a daunting you know experience. I mean, not of course you know for a queen, but um, and and she probably it was interesting to do my research you know on her 
she's not only is she probably the most well-known person in the world, but she's also um, uh, the, the most photographed person in the world. I mean, I was just overwhelmed with the amount of, of, of work there was to, to see of her over, over the years. Um, but um, the, tr the, the truth is, I mean, she she's in her 80s, and um, you know, she the 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 cape she was wearing is like 75 pounds, and uh, I, I think I was told I was interrupting a, one of her t favorite television shows for the day. <laughs> but um, you know, and 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 she, and she walked in, and you know, she was a she was a bit you know cranky <laughs> to begin with, and a bit bit feisty. But you know, r right after it was over, I, I I turned to her press secretary and I said, God, I just love her. She's great because she was irritated, and you know. But she she was walking into the shoot, and then she she just sort of got to work, and she didn't leave until she's you know, a pro. She's actually, if you watch a this, great she's a pro. resolve, great sense of duty, all those things. She didn't leave until I said we were done. I mean, she didn't. She never walked out, and and that's what, why she was in, incensed about what what came out and what was said because she would never. She said in her 50 years, she's never walked out on a photo Although shoot. she did a little testy when you asked her if she could remove her crown. Well, you know, that, <laughs> and she had every right, you know, and, and I thought she was being funny. And I know when she says, what do you think this is? You know, because I said, you know, what happened was these, these, this kind of shoot where you have 20, 25 minutes, um, you, um, they, they're very well planned out. You, you don't, you, I mean, she, especially at her age, she's not going to make a change, you know, in clothing. So, you know, everything is sort of planned. She was supposed to come in without it on, and then we were supposed to add it. And so she came in with, with it on, and, and I, and I, and, I and, and so I was, you know, I said, I said, you know, isn't it a little bit, you know, dressy? I mean, and I, what I meant was, what I really meant, you know, <laughs> was that um, I wanted to, to try this very regal, formal, um, you know, uh, clothing that she had on um, uh, without the without the crown because I thought she, we didn't. I thought on some level didn't really need to have the crown because there was so much else, you know, and, and you could see her. I thought you could see her a little better without right. the crown. Of course, she, you know, she got, you know, she was upset and she says, "Well, dressy, dressy, what do you think this is?" You know, so, and I, I thought she was being funny. <laughs> So, but, so you, know, you know, but you know, then again, she she went ahead and and she did take it. She did take the crown off, and uh, and she also put it back on. I just liked her feistiness. I, I, I was really impressed with it. And uh, at first, I, I wasn't too sure if she was kidding or not. And um, and then uh, I realized she wasn't kidding. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a five-minute session. <laughs> I thought she totally pulled herself back together and started to enjoy herself. And she totally wanted to make sure um, that she did her part on her end. Annie and the Queen would meet again in 2016 for the May issue of Vanity Fair, celebrating the monarch's 90th birthday. It was incredible this time to go back and photograph her because she had her ideas of what she wanted to do. She wanted to be photographed with her dogs, she wanted to be photographed with her daughter, and she wanted to be photographed with her grandchildren. And she didn't mention anything about her son or her husband, <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> But this was her list, and this is what we did. <laughs> <laughs>